will continue with our uh, derivation of an expression for the uh, average term okay at the interface there are again uh, just based on a question that a student asked me yesterday i thought i would remind you that when we looked at the equation do u do t plus do f do x equals 0 f is f of u right you remember that across a, a, a shock as we called it right across a discontinuity because i had explained this problem in terms of I explained the uh, or model in terms of a small shock tube in which there is a tiny discontinuity and we are trying to figure out what happens in that shock tube so just to remind you remind you the propagation speed at that time right we found the propagation speed at that time just to remind you was f of u r minus f of u l divided by u r minus u l fine so where you are talking basically in terms of you have you have an interface and on the left hand side you have u l and on the right hand side you have u r and we were basically looking at how that interface propagated okay <coughs> and we derived this expression for the speed of propagation fine derived this expression for the, we are essentially we are essentially using that now they were asking the question we are asking the question what is this a in the scalar case this was just a number but in the vector case then it becomes a little more complicated it is not just a set of three numbers right so in the vector case we have do q do t plus do e do x equals 0 do q do t plus do e do x equals 0 e is a function of q in a similar fashion so this is this is if you look at this what we are basically saying here is delta u times u s equals delta f right and we write an identical equation here delta u times this is delta u times u s equals delta f and we are writing an identical equation so the different ways to approach this okay yesterday I gave one level one kind of motivation so you can just basically write delta e equivalent to delta f is some a times delta q is that fine and we wanted to find out we want to find out what are the entries in a we want to find out what are the entries in a now as I had indicated we will convert this equation we will convert this equation in terms of enthalpy okay so what was what is delta e delta e is delta rho u delta rho u squared plus p delta rho e t plus p times u okay so other than the deltas it is clearly the same as e so we will just look at e so if I want to convert it to enthalpy there are two things one I need to get rid of the I want to the objective is to get rid of the pressure and the total energy okay so I need to get rid of this p and the definition of enthalpy of course directly gives us the total enthalpy here so rho e t if you think about it enthalpy was h is e plus p by rho so as a consequence the total enthalpy is total energy plus p I have, I have multiplied through by rho okay so immediately this quantity becomes rho h t that is nice okay the other expressions are a little messier so this is it is nice we will take it right what was p you remember the expression for p we got p through the definition of e total we got p we got p through the definition of e total as 
gamma minus 1 plus u squared by 2. Is that right? P by rho, P by rho is RT, R by gamma minus 1 is CV, CVT is E. Okay, that is basically what, what we have done. And as a consequence, this P in fact turns out to be E total minus U squared by 2. If you want rho e total, if you can take the rho inside also, gamma minus 1. Okay. Yeah. So, A you will have to bear with me because we are going to make the substitutions and all of that stuff. B you will have to make sure I do not, I stay honest, do not make, make sure I do not make mistakes, right. So, okay, here we have it. What is rho u squared plus p? Therefore, is well before I do that, let me I need to do one more step, right? Because if I substitute for rho u squared plus p from here, then I will get a rho et, right? So, what, 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 what shall I do? I want to eliminate this rho et. Is there something I can do up here? Okay, so maybe before doing this, you can either add add p to this and eliminate it. Just like we use this equation, you have to be a bit careful. Okay, I can add p here. So e t plus p e t plus p by rho e t plus p by rho is H T. So you have P by rho into one plus one by gamma minus one plus U squared by two. Is that fine? So I get a gamma divided by gamma minus one. So in fact, the same P can be written as. H T rho H T minus rho U squared by 2 into gamma by gamma minus 1. Is that fine? Okay. The only difference is that this gives me a gamma by gamma minus 1. little manipulation. Now come back, what is rho u squared plus p? Rho u squared plus all of this stuff, okay. So that gives me a gamma by gamma minus 1 rho h t. minus a gamma by gamma minus 1 rho u squared by 2, fine. Not much we can do with this, we can combine these two terms. This gives me rho u squared times 1 minus gamma by 2 times gamma minus 1. So I will have a 2 gamma minus a gamma which gives me a gamma in the numerator. Then I have a minus 2 
divided by 2 into gamma minus 1. Okay, so we have figured out rho u squared plus p. is gamma by gamma minus 1 rho h t plus gamma minus 2 by 2 times gamma minus 1 rho u square. <coughs> is that fine? Okay. Yeah, as I said, you please make sure, check to make sure that there are no algebraic errors. Fine. So that's delta e. What about uh, what about delta q? So we need to just look at q. Q is rho rho u. That's easy. Rho e t, and we have made a substitution for rho e t already. Rho e t is. rho e t is rho h t minus p and we have an expression for p in terms of rho h t. This equals rho h t minus gamma by gamma minus 1 rho h t. gamma by gamma minus 1 rho u squared by 2. Is that fine? So here again I get a gamma minus a gamma it goes away. I am left with a minus 1 divided by gamma minus 1. So in fact rho e t equals gamma by gamma minus 1 rho u squared by 2 minus rho h t by gamma minus 1. Is that fine? Okay. The only only one left, the only one left. So of course we can stick a delta in front of this, so that we get delta rho, delta rho u, delta rho e t. So only one left is a. Okay. What is a? Zero. Tell me the entries of a gamma. Ma Three minus gamma, gamma minus three, gamma minus three by two times u. What's the? Yeah. Gamma minus one times u cubed minus gamma e t times u. And that's one. Three minus gamma. Gamma e t minus. 3 by 2 gamma minus 1 u squared and that is 0 gamma minus 1 gamma u. So really the only one we have to only ones we have to be concerned about are these two okay. Now I want to say something here right think back to the previous class where is this a is a an average a where is this a so this is this is the a that we are getting at the notation that we used in the previous class at p minus half. So all of these u's that I am indicating here they are not the same as the u's that you see here. All the u's that you see here are, are, are a different category right these correspond to delta rho u and so on yeah. Yeah. I think it should be multiplied by gamma minus 1 by gamma not gamma. It should be multiplied by gamma minus 1 by gamma did I go? Yeah it is gamma minus 
gamma minus 1 by gamma okay you said right gamma minus 1 by gamma yeah i have a gamma minus 1 here that's fine and what is the consequence of that that's going to have that's going to ripple through the whole thing then because if i substitute for p yeah, this two didn't really look that good but it's fine so what does that give me here i have a cheat sheet i can actually pull out a piece of paper and write 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 it out but i thought i would work through it yeah tell me so as a consequence i have rho u squared plus p uh and the p gives me that's here what you're saying is this should be gamma minus 1 by gamma is that right that should be gamma minus 1 by gamma and this gives me a should give me a 1 by gamma a gamma minus the gamma gives me a 1 by gamma now i am happy i don't remember seeing a gamma minus 2 by 2 but anyway it's fine 1 by gamma fine so that's 1 by gamma rho u squared plus p will give me a 1 by gamma and this is a gamma minus 1 by gamma this is gamma rho u squared by this is 2 gamma two gamma two gamma minus gamma gives me a gamma minus 1 gamma plus 1 minus of minus gamma plus 1 okay i am willing to live with that as i said by 2 gamma as i said right and this should be a gamma by gamma minus 1 gamma minus 1 by gamma is that fine okay so what happens to this then what does that give me for rho et rho h t rho e t is so this is a this is a gamma minus a, a gamma so that's a 1 by gamma right 1 by gamma rho h t plus a gamma This is gamma minus one. Okay. Right now I'll go with you guys. As I said, I have a cheat sheet. Anyway, I know what the answer is supposed to be, so it's okay. So it'll work out, right? Plus, so if it doesn't work out, I am. There's a reason why I'm doing this. I mean, I. Uh, it's very easy to just put up the answer at the end, right? You get. You have to. Uh, it you don't want to get into the habit of just opening a book and say there's an expression in this book i just take this expression right you can waste a lot there could be a typographical error there can be a sign error there can be something as silly as this it happens these things happen right i could take this i can write it up i can type it up i can publish a book and nowadays it's very easy it's out there you look at it it's on the web it's uh, it's in the print and you say yes this is correct you take it you implement it you are spending a month two months three months your code is not working things are not coming out right and it may be all because of a silly typographical error right so whatever it is just like you have done now you should get into the habit 
of any equation, any expression that you use. I am not just taking it from the book or taking it from a reference, but make sure that you can derive it, right. Make sure that you can derive it and that you have, you are, you are confident that the derivation is correct. Am I making sense? Okay. So I am going, as I said, I can, I can very easily write the, as easily write the, and I have a little cheat sheet in my, but there, there is a reason why I go through this process, right. I want you to see, I want you to get into the habit of doing it. You have to do it. You have to check, right. You have to check. And uh, yeah, it is, it is uh, error prone process. You have to know how to, how to make, you know, how to do counter checks and so on. Fine. Okay. So. One of the things here of course is that you know that this gamma E t, that is very nice. So the gamma E t will give me, you know, you can divide through by rho, you can make a substitution here. You right, no, okay, back to where I was. So we are back to where we, where I was, the explanation I was giving you earlier. So these u's are not the same as the u's that you see up here. These u's are different, okay. This u of course comes from the state, but the minute I write delta q, I am talking about some u left and u right. So delta rho u is actually rho u left state minus rho u right state minus rho u left state. Am I making sense? That is delta rho u, okay. So the, so this, these are actually rho r u r minus rho l u l. That is, that is, that is where these are. These are all lefts and rights. This is at actually at the interface. These values, these values, so do not confuse them. These values are actually at the interface. In fact, our objective is to find this u, right. Our objective is to find this u. So if I substitute for E t and yes, I know that this has only E t and u in it, but if I substitute for E t here in terms of total enthalpy, the only two things that I need to find here are u and total enthalpy. So that is a genius here. You understand what I am saying? The genius of this derivation is that you are left with only u and ht to be found, right. Though we started off by saying, oh my God, there are nine quantities that need to be found. I have only three equations, right. What we have ended up with basically is u and ht at the interface. So these are all actually at p minus half, okay. These are all actually at p minus half. So right now, for now, I'll write p minus half. Later on, I will. I'll make my life easier, and right, I'll make my life easier. So these are all at p minus half. Because once we have called these u r's and u l's, right? I basically, say why don't I just leave that as a u? So we leave that. We leave that as it is. Okay. Now we need to do the grand multiplications. Okay, we need to do the grand multiplication. The first equation is relatively easy. It require it requires no effort. Okay, uh, so we are going to go across the three parts of the board here, right? Just to remind you, you look here. Delta e is a delta q. So I need to find a delta q to get my delta e. So the first equation, what is delta e? The first equation is delta rho u. And that equals <coughs> what is a delta q? Tell me, look at the equation and tell me. It gives me nothing. It says delta rho u is delta rho u. First equation falls apart, okay. The first equation gives me nothing. It basically says delta rho u is delta rho u, but fortunately, we still have two equations and we have only two unknowns, right? That is that's, that's what I am saying. So, the great thing is that we have reduced it to two unknowns. So delta rho, this is just an identity that gave us nothing, fine, is that okay. Let us look at the second equation. Let us look at the second equation. I have my rho u squared plus p here. So I am going to erase, I am going to erase a lot of this, a lot of the stuff, right. Whatever we need to substitute for rho ht, I presume you have in your notebook. So you will help me out. So I am going to erase a lot of the stuff. So there is any, any errors, all evidence of errors are going to disappear. What does the second equation give me? 
this is rho u squared plus p uh, somewhere I had written rho u squared plus p delta of rho u squared plus p is oh that is here so gamma minus 1 by gamma rho h t plus gamma plus 1 by gamma rho u squared by 2 right that is rho u squared plus p that is rho u squared plus p and this equals that is delta e a delta q first element is gamma minus 3 right u p minus half I want I want to differentiate I do not want to keep saying this u p minus half maybe I will use tildes or something of that sort to indicate that it is the value at uh, so this is gamma minus 3 by 2 into u tilde and what does that multiply delta rho delta rho second one gamma minus 3 into delta rho u okay and gamma minus 1 into delta rho et which is this quantity plus gamma minus 1 times that quantity rho h t delta rho h t gamma minus 1 into Is that fine? Where is the minus three minus gamma? Three minus gamma, therefore, it's minus. Okay, so you should have a sense that we are in the right direction because gamma minus one by gamma rho h t, gamma minus one by gamma rho h t. Anytime things cancel, you feel good. Though in fluid mechanics sometimes they cancel and you made a mistake, right? So you always have to keep your eyes open. You still have to keep your eyes open. It's happened to me, right? There are times I was, I was thrilled that something cancelled and that everything came together, and then you had to understand that fluid mechanics is beautiful because sometimes they don't cancel; they add, right? So there's problem. Okay, good. So you have that. You cancel that out, right? We cancel that out. Tell me now. What is the equation that we have? What is the equation that we have? Is this right? U, yeah, yeah. I think there's a U here. U tilde, P minus half. Right? Because it's coming out a lot easier than it's supposed to. You're not supposed to get a linear equation. You're supposed to get a quadratic. So that's U tilde squared, and there's a U tilde here. Okay. Fine. There is a certain pattern to it. See, when I step back and look at it, I say, "Oh, I have a u squared, u cubed, u u squared." You understand? Nothing u. There is a certain pattern to it, right? One corresponds to energy, which is like momentum times du integral. Am I making sense? So there is you expect you expect those kinds of patterns. 
right I am up here I am not really paying attention to it but at some point you have to and I caught it because I know I should get a quadratic equation right but normally you can keep your eyes open for these kinds of patterns to make sure that right those things work those things really work okay so what does this give me on the left hand side delta of rho u squared gamma plus 1 by 2 gamma and here I have another so I guess I can bring that over to the right hand side okay. So what I want to do is what I need to get the figure out what is uh, gamma plus gamma minus 1 squared by 2 gamma minus gamma plus 1 by 2 gamma just to straighten that out. gamma plus 1 into that is gamma plus 1 oops what am I doing I guess I will have to expand that out gamma squared minus 2 gamma plus 1 minus gamma minus 1 divided by 2 gamma that gives me a gamma squared minus uh, 3 gamma plus 1 divided by 2 gamma no plus 1 thank you which gives me a gamma minus 3 by 2 yes and again I am happy why am I happy the gamma minus 3 will cancel right so this is all going in the right direction it is all going in the right direction we started off with this really messy equation it is already so this is one of the things about derivations it starts getting a little messy sometimes we panic and we just say oh let it go this cannot be right but some, if you if you persist right if you stick with it then things sometimes fa start falling into place right and things like this make you feel good everything cancels yes this must be the right direction okay now I will erase this right because I am going to leave the enthalpy thing to you okay I am going to and it is not I will tell you why it is not complicated and you know it is not complicated lots of things are going to simplify and the expression that you get will be very similar to what we have here I leave the enthalpy part to you so the gamma minus 3 goes away so tell me what we have we have a delta rho delta rho uh, gamma minus 3 uh, what happens delta rho by 2 u tilde squared minus delta rho u u tilde plus delta rho u squared by 2 is that right this equals 0 you have a quadratic equation in u tilde in fact we can multiply by multiply through by 2 get rid of that 2 multiply through by 2 so you get a 2 times this looks even better. okay so the roots for this are u tilde equals delta rho u plus minus square root delta rho u squared minus delta rho times delta rho u squared right we understand delta rho u squared is applied to the delta is applied to the whole thing I'm being a little lazy here whole divided by 
delta rho. Fine. Okay. Okay, this cannot be simplified any further. Yeah, the twos go away, all the twos will cancel. That is why I got it in this. This is a canonical form, I got it in the standard form. Okay, okay, is that fine? Now we cannot go any further. Now, though it looks messy, we have to we have to substitute for the delta rows and delta rho u's. Okay, cannot go any further. So, delta rho u is rho r u r minus rho l u l. So, delta rho u whole squared is rho r u r squared plus rho l squared minus twice rho r u r or I will combine them together rho r rho l u r u l okay delta rho of course is rho r minus rho l that is easy and delta rho u squared is I will write it below. rho r u r squared minus rho l u l squared. Substitute right, we boldly go ahead because it has been working so far, it is going to work now. Substitute what we get u tilde candidate is rho r u r right rho r u r minus rho l u l plus minus square root rho r u r square plus rho l u l squared minus 2 rho r rho l u r u l delta rho times this plus maybe I should anyway it is okay. I will stick this under all of this is one numerator plus rho r minus rho l times rho r u r squared minus rho l u l squared. This is the numerator. The denominator of course is this whole thing divided by rho r minus rho l. We will get to that. Where did I miss a minus? rho r u r rho r this comes from the quadratic from the plus minus thank you thank you that minus is very critical because every minus is very critical but that minus is particularly very critical. It is critical because I see a rho r squared u r squared that is going to cancel that and a rho l squared u l squared that is going to cancel that okay that minus is our friend okay. So what do we get this gives me u tilde is if I simplify plus minus square root I get a minus uh, 2 rho r rho l u r u l minus rho r minus rho r 
minus plus plus rho r rho l u l squared minus minus plus plus rho r rho l u r squared square root okay whole again divided by rho r minus rho l whole thing divided by rho r minus rho l. Yes, what can we do to this? U L minus U R whole square into the root rho R under root rho r u r minus under root rho l u l is that what you give get what you get minus plus Factor out the rho r rho l. Good, rho r rho l into u r u r minus u l squared. Okay, that's what that gives you. So you can get it out. So u tilde equals rho r u r minus rho l u l plus minus that. None of that divided by rho r minus rho l. Is that fine? Yes. Minus. Yes. Doesn't matter. Plus minus will take care of that. The plus minus will take care of that. Now I am going to. So there are two things I have already told you. I am going to leave the second equation to you, right? The last equation to you. Uh, the plus root will not give us something that's useful. Okay. If you take the plus root, I would, I would, I want you to try it out. Okay. The plus root. If we have the time, maybe we'll get to it. But the plus root will not give us. The positive root is not going to give us something that we that's useful. So we'll take the negative root. Okay, I am going to take the negative root. You can follow through on the positive root with the argument that I give for the negative root. You can then go back and look at the positive root and see why what was what is wrong with it. There is something wrong with it. Okay. So I take the negative root. So I use this obviously the first time you derive it, you are going to try out each one, and instinctively we try the positive root and then try the negative root. Now what? Tell me a way to simplify this. You get a, I'll, I'll, I'll. We, see, we have to live with the square roots, right? We have to live with the square roots. So we'll do something. See, this is these are the times for us to do bold things, right? I'm going to write this as square root of rho r squared. So this looks like an a squared minus b squared thing. We can factor it, and then there is hope that we can do the same thing here, right? I presume that's the direction in which you are going. Okay. So then, if you go in that direction, if you go in that direction, so you have a u r. You have a, you can so you can pull out the u r's and the u l's, right? You can combine the terms. So u tilde is. Tell me. So what do I get? I can pull out a rho r square root rho r u r that gives me a square root rho r minus a square root 
square root rho L and what is the other one give you plus uh, square root of rho L u L the u is outside the square root uh, I have a minus sign here minus sign here that becomes a plus into rho r minus square root rho l okay divided by rho r minus rho l which of course can be written factored as a consequence of all this algebra we get this amazing expression right which tells us that which tells us that u tilde is square root rho r u r plus square root rho l u l divided by square root rho r plus rho l square root rho r plus square root rho l I have to be a little more patient just thinking in my mind convex combination and doing the wrong thing <laughs> okay. So if I define alpha just to if I define alpha as square root rho r by square root of oh here I go again rho r the square root of rho l then the other way is 1 minus alpha is of course the other term. So u tilde is an alpha times u r plus a 1 minus alpha times u l okay right I want you to follow through on the positive root because I do not have enough time to do it right now I want you to follow through on the positive root but I want you to understand that look at that positive root in this context alpha is clearly between 0 and 1 you understand so this is truly a linear combination and because alpha is between 0 and 1 u tilde will be between u r and u l okay you will go through the positive thing you will be able to reason out that you do not have that am I making sense so I have I have given you two quantities and I am saying get me a mean value between these two quantities and your answer is yeah it should be between those two quantities give me an average between these two quantities and you expect it is and this satisfies that okay the positive root will not okay the negative root satisfies that it is in between it is an interpolation we promised an interpolation we have got an interpolation the only difference is that this looks a bit bizarre right but remember that we interpolated in some kind of a function space that is E was a function of Q and we had two values of Q right and we are looking interpolating we are looking for a mean in that in that setup not in the XY coordinate system so we are we are willing to live with this okay. So the average you will get a similar expression for HT you will get a similar expression for HT you can verify that you will get a similar expression for HT do not take my word for it check it right like I had indicated you will get a similar expression for HT. So we know the you know the U and you know two quantities we need a third quantity it is usual to take it is usual to take rho tilde it is usual to take rho tilde as the square root as the geometric mean looking at all of this stuff looking at the expressions that we have got it is usual to take rho tilde as rho r the geometric mean square root of rho r rho l okay fine right so now we have now we have we are able to find this is named after named after uh, the scientist who derived this after PL rho so this is called rho's average. Called rows average. Is that fine? Okay. Are there any questions? As I said, I, I deliberately I wanted to go through that. Some of these derivations I want you to see. It. So it's not that 
uh, all of us it is not that we open a book and say oh so and so has done this I am just going to take it and use it and so on I am, I am very serious just a simple sign error you can struggle you know you go through all of this and then find that there is a typographical error somewhere it is not worth wasting that kind of time you should always it is worth the investment of a day or two or whatever and checking out the derivation yourself okay it is not worth it is not worth wasting time on some uh, printed or downloaded material which may have a typographical error in it. it could be as simple or it could be that uh, someone's actually actually made a derivation so how are you going to find it so you have to actually sit down and derive and make sure that you are able to come up with it okay please please do not get into the habit of just opening the book and ripping the formula out of the book is that fine okay uh, in the next class I will see if I can set up a demo for you in the next class and then I am going to do try to do if we have time right uh, at least one or two more things with respect to the Euler's equation okay and then we will go on looking at schemes as to how to make things run faster converge faster fine okay so we are sort of coming towards the end of the semester I want to give you an idea as to where we are going and then we will do a little uh, what I called uh, what I call three lemmas in the theorem I will do a little calculus of variations for you and show you a different way of looking at all of these, these all of these problems that you are working on is that fine okay thank you.